Hey everybody, it is Wes with Pikes Peak Trades and here on the very last day of 2021. Hope you had a good year. Hope you're excited about the upcoming year. Uh, I think we're in for a lot of excitement in the markets and this year in video is going to uh, take us back and look at a big picture of uh, the main indices and ETFs that I cover. Um, I'll also quickly go through some of my favorite big tech names um, looking into their price charts into the early part of 2022, um, take you through IWM and also uh, ARK and uh, give a little bit of an idea about maybe where small caps and growth stocks are headed. So we're looking here at the S&P 500 monthly chart and really interesting because you look at that candle at the end of November and that potential shooting star candle Bears had the opportunity to really push it down. They were able to make a lower low in December, but then the rest of the month, really after the first week of December, uh, strongly up a really, really bullish month, almost a 5% gainer here in December of 2021. And with an outside bullish candle, you just can't get very bearish on the monthly, the, the only thing that you could start to look at from a bearish perspective is we're starting to see, as I drag this through here, some divergence here on the monthly RSI. Uh, but I would point out that the last time that really played out was during this topping period of 2018 from January all the way through September. And that's actually kind of what I'm thinking is going to happen here in the markets is we're, we're working on developing a topping pattern uh, that I think could culminate in the fall into a primary degree top. A lot like what happened in the uh, 2018 where we had a big move up the first month of the year, but then a pullback, a move up throughout into the fall, but then a really harsh fall. And that's, that's where I've got us looking at. So I don't think we've yet topped in this intermediate wave three, which would actually would have been what this was. This was an intermediate three, four into a topping five, although I don't have the subdegrees labeled, and then into a primary top. So I am expecting some very tradable volatility in 2022 uh, with prob probably another difficult market environment. I don't think many would say that 2021 was easy to trade. Um, if it was, you know, great for you, but I, I do think that we're going to have a lot of, of opportunities to really swing some good price action. So I'm, I am looking bullish into the early part of the year, maybe a pullback into that February, March timeframe, a lot like what we saw in 2021, some strength into the summer. And then I think we could see uh, a multi-month correction of a primary degree wave here. Okay, so let's just keep drilling down into smaller time frames. So we're now looking at the weekly uh, the weekly candle quite a bit above um, its MA cluster that just like on the monthly is nicely bullishly aligned. Again, we are looking at that potential RSI divergence. So I do think that will usher in eventually these tops. Um, and some geometry that I've got is I, I think we could really make a push early in the year for 5,000. So I, I see this uh, maybe as double resistance into the middle of the month before we see that pullback. I've left on my charts two potentially uh, bearish paths. I think the red that we've already topped in a primary wave, now that would have to move over here. I think it's very, very low probability. In fact, I, I was tempted to just delete it from the charts. I'm going to leave it there as a placeholder. The other possibility that that does have some probability, although I don't think it's very likely, is that we're working on an expanded flat wave four uh, that could see price meet up here with the weekly 50 SMA and then onto the daily uh, that would meet up with the daily 200 SMA. Um, now, I, I don't see us in a likelihood for that because here at the, at the middle part of December, the S&P already recaptured all of its moving average cluster and it's already stacked bullishly. And so for the blue count to be correct, immediately Monday of next week, 
uh, we would need to see very swift declines um, that, that moves rapidly throughout most of the month to try to take this down. And I, I just don't see that being uh, the very likely path here. So you're seeing here on the smaller time frames the development of some shorter term paths. And what I think could be happening here is that we're, we're working on finding the top of this minute three wave. So after the low on December 3rd, a one, two, we're somewhere within that three. And now I don't exactly know where we are within that three. So I'm offering that we could be within a subdegree four of the three. So let me now show you what that would look like on the shorter term time frame right in here that either this wave four is done or it's almost done. I'm leaning towards early next week, one move down to try to fill out this potential bull flag that really I think has only had one touch on the bottom. So it's possible that this circle three is actually all of four. I don't think this move right here looks very impulsive, at least nothing to get me too excited about, but I could easily be wrong. And next week on Monday, we could just burst out of it. If we do that, a bursting move out with a back test would be my invitation to get long to try to find the top here of this wave three. Now, in purple, if we see more of a correction early into the week, it's in purple because ultimately this would just be more bullish that maybe this is the top of a wave one and we need to correct all price from December 20. So do we have a one, two, three, four, five down to make an A with a zigzag up for B, and then finally a leg down uh, to finish the week. So I, I leave that as a possibility, but what I think is probably more likely is that we're just gonna see a continuation here of price to try to finish out um, in January. That, that definitely, I think, matches more of what we're kind of seeing here on the daily chart. So uh, we'll, we'll know soon. Um, I'm not gonna take any heavy bets uh, going into the holiday weekend. Let's just see what Monday gives. And as I mentioned on that shorter term time frame, we could see some resolution soon. Okay, let's move into big tech. So here we have the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100, and I've zoomed this out even more for you on the monthly. So you can see that I still think we're in a super cycle wave. Um, I think we're working on a cycle wave here. So this would be the fifth cycle wave of that move. And I don't even think uh, we've yet to see um, a primary top within that from the COVID low. So I would point out to you that that big tech, unlike the S&P, did not make a lower low in March of 2020 as compared to December of 2018. So unlike IWM and unlike the S&P 500. So that, so that requires a different count. So I have it still within a three of three. So still within a very bullish count. Um, and that monthly candle, to me, it looks like a hammer. Um, it, I don't think you would call it a hanging man. It's a green candle. It didn't make a higher high than November. So we're still waiting kind of for that resolution. So into the monthly, or sorry, the weekly. Now, that weekly candle is a little bit suspect. So it kind of does look a little bit like a shooting star candle. Um, maybe if it, were, if it would, were red, a gravestone doji, but I'm not, again, ready to be too bearish. What I think it might be telling us is maybe early in the week, next week, we do see a slight pullback. So just like the S&P, I've got those more bearish counts on there. But again, I think they're, they're low probability. Everything technically other than developing RSI divergence, which again here is just potential divergence until it follows through, is telling me that I still think we're looking for higher prices early in the year. So this count matches the S&P. We're working to find an intermediate three top. We'll see a pullback. Uh, let's say maybe the end of the quarter in 2022, then a big move up through the summer and the fall before we get that primary degree correction. So into the daily, you'll kind of see that count developed just like the S&P. I'm not sure if we've reached um, a significant topping area. So it would be um, a wave one here since we made a lower low on the queues in December. Where we're at there is yet to be seen. So on the shorter term, 
time frames here. Let me get that into here. Do we have all of wave four in place? And we're gonna be working up to try to find the top of that minute one. You know, or, or is minute one in place? And we've gotta work lower early in the week to try to find uh, the bottom of that minute two. And I'm not sure yet. This potential bull flag, had it, it, quite, a, quite a range here. And you could say it's got some touches. I, I would have to play with that a little bit, but I'm leaving in the possibility that maybe we need to work a little bit more downwards early in the week, kind of also due to the, maybe that questionable candle. And when I get into some of these individual names here, I think we'll see, I think we need a little bit more work down early in the week to start the first week of 2022. So let's get into those names. So Tesla, um, you know, Tesla with an inside day today to finish uh, this week, it's possible it's done everything that it needs to set the stage for another powerful rally. If I get into the smaller time frames here on Tesla, I want to point out that it doesn't quite look to me like this potential bull flag is filled out. It, it possibly could be, but man, it would look a whole lot better if we could move down to touch the bottom of this potential flag before we get a strong rally. And that would correspond to what I was suggesting about maybe some early weakness next week. But, you know, just like with those potential flags on the S&P and the Qs, if we break out decisively and we back test it, I think then that's probably an indication we could be looking for some strong price action from Tesla um, early in the month. If I take you into some other daily charts, I won't get into the details of all of them. So does Microsoft need to work a little bit lower? It's possible it's done with its wave two. It'd be a little shallow, but in, in a strong uptrend, very possible. Maybe it needs to work down a little bit more here to tw touch that uh, 0.382 fib, about 334. Goog, Goog, not a good look here on Goog. It, it lost its volume shelf point of control. It's now beneath all of its daily EMAs. And it this could just be uh, a bear trap here, but I'm wondering if Goog needs, needs to go down a little bit lower and try to set maybe a more convincing bottoming candle early in the week, Monday or Tuesday. So maybe more of a candle that looks like one of these hammers that then followed through. You, you could potentially call that um, an inverted hammer candle, but I, I don't really like to play that, especially before the weekend. So um, Goog is one I'm watching to try to get long, but not yet willing to get long. Facebook, kind of similar. So um, a candle that loses, at least it looks like in the next 30 minutes, will lose on a closing basis its volume point of control here. Back testing this potential breakout, which, which is maybe an encouraging pattern for the bulls, but losing its eight EMA, I'm thinking it might need to move back down and touch this daily cluster that's right in there around 335, 336. Okay, Amazon, one, one that just uh, cannot get off the mat, um, continuing to, to just get pushed backwards from its daily MA cluster. And it again, it lost its 200 today. So it's possible that this volume point of control, this 0.786 fib, is going to make it bottom above this low at 33.12, uh, but maybe it needs a double bottom. So, so maybe this too needs to slide over, um, and then we can get a reversal, like I suggested in Goog, maybe some type of hammer candle to give it a reversal. But certainly a very frustrating name, and it kind of begs the question: uh, you know, does it is it going to require a split catalyst to get it moving? And it might be, you, you know, it, it's impossible to speculate on when that could occur. But just as of right now, uh, Amazon from a technical perspective is one of the weakest here in the big, the big tech. You're going to notice its daily MA cluster is starting to cross and curve downwards. So it needs a pretty big rescue in the first week of January 2022 for me to have much confidence in a resolution of, of a new all-time high. Okay, so we can look at Apple. Um, I think Apple, just like maybe Facebook and Google and Microsoft, needs a little bit lower 
it could drop down here in this uh, purple fib to uh, test it's 21 EMA. But again, we're going to see so a, a breakout of the potential bull flag back testing up. And I think we could see um, Apple challenge $200 in early 2022. Okay, let's keep moving through some of the other indices after we get through some of the big tech there. And let's get into IWM. So monthly chart of IWM, um, it, it's a red candle as of right now, just because it's currently below 223 where it's just barely beneath the open of the candle, but it does have a hammer look. And you're going to notice that this month it's recovered some of its key EMAs. It, it's eight specifically, and it's 13. So I think we could say it's got a wave four in place, but I, I would only be looking for one more move up. So as happened in 2018, um, I think small caps will actually top early, just like they did in August. The rest of the indices topped in October before it starts to move down. I don't think it will be of a cycle degree, but I am looking for a primary degree correction. And maybe small cap starts its correction during the intermediate degree correction of the other indices. So while they could eke out a higher high, in the summer, maybe maybe IWM does not. That's at least what I'm looking for uh, right now in small caps. Moving into the weekly, the weekly is a doji candle right here. So it does indicate a little bit of indecision heading into the week. And it's just basically right in the middle of a secondary volume cluster and it's weekly MA. So this could go either way. I don't think the blue bearish count is of high probability any kind of pullback, I think we would just be looking for a higher low minor two. Now, it is possible that that minor two is in at today's low. It is possible that it's just reached a shallow wave two and it's going to move strongly upwards. Um, but I don't see a great looking impulsive wave um, off of that that potential low that and that sorry that wouldn't have been today's low that potential minor two low would have been on the on the 29th that would have been on Wednesday's low uh, so I don't really like this move here as an impulse wave one with the pullback two but I want to leave the possibility that it's definitely possible I think as I'm suggesting we could see a general market move down early in the week maybe down to 220. 219 right into that fib to try to finish out what could be here a double zigzag wave two. So let's just see. Again, it kind of makes sense for me to suggest. I don't think any massive positions over the weekend are justified. Enough uncertainty out, out there. Let, let's see what happens when uh, you know big money um, and volume comes back in in the first week of the month. Okay, so we're looking now to finish up at growth at Art K. And on the monthly candle, um, it bounced off so far, uh, well, to finish this month off of its 34 EMA. But you know that it's not really technically looking convincing. It's possible that we do see growth return to its selling ways after we've had a little bit of a relief. Um, again, the weekly candle, it, it's, it's down you know, on the week significantly. It hasn't recaptured any of its important MAs, and it's just kind of right here in, in this, I guess you could call it a, a demand zone, uh, but we haven't seen price move enthusiastically out of it. So until it does, it's, it's enough to reserve a little bit of judgment on growth, but I'm going to keep that bullish count in there. It's possible that we've already seen today a pullback into a wave two fib. I, I don't like that it lost today. Um, it's 8 EMA on a closing basis, so maybe we need a little bit lower. I could put in one more lower FIB here uh, if we need to see IWM move, move maybe a, another dollar down before it's ready to try to work strongly into a 3. And if we do go up, I do want you to notice that this would be a 3 of 3 of 3. So we would be expecting some really big moves up in some growth stocks. And there are some individual names within this that I like. So I do want to show you some of those. I do like Roku. 
So Roku may be working here on a back test of this breakout. Don't like today's candle, so I'm going to stay away going into the week. Maybe we need a fuller back test down to around 227. Also like shop. So shop, a similar count. Is it a 1212 for shop? Almost here, a bearish engulfing candle body. So I, again, I don't like how we're shaping up to end the week here. So maybe shop also needs to work down to a lower fib, just like I was suggesting in RK. Maybe we need to see it down here to about 1370 early in the week before a chance to move strongly up. And then the final one I'll leave you with here is square. I do like the possibility of a 1212 on square. So on that short term count, maybe we've seen a bottom and we're ready to move up enthusiastically. Or this could also, just like Roku and just like Shop, could need to see this 0.786 fib. So I think a lot of, of things really interesting to look at for individual names. The indices are starting to align to where swings could come back into play in the month of January. But I definitely want to see where we open on Monday uh, before getting uh, enthusiastic about putting any significant size or money or even numbers of positions on going into that first week. So hope this gave you a nice update of things I'm looking at and where I think we could be going for 2022. Uh, have a wonderful uh, New Year's celebration. Have a great weekend. Uh, be safe and have a lot of fun. And we'll look forward to ringing in that first week of the trading year when I see you all on Monday. Take care.